lot of help from, uh, uh, from uh, the new uh, technology. And yet, I think even in uh, a very uh, strictly surgical um, uh, lesion, uh, we can benefit from uh, uh, developments. And uh, I have to apologize for showing some slides uh, which are very technical, but I will try to go over them uh, faster so that we can uh, focus on the on the essentials. By the way, this is a photograph of a colleague of mine and myself in our last visit here, uh, our previous visit in 2013, which had impressed us very much, and of course now we're even more impressed. Um, double out the right ventricle is a, a complex congenital malformation which interestingly was first described um, by John Abernethy in 1793. It's amazing, uh, history teaches always so much that uh, more than a century ago there were scientists who were interested in looking at and trying to understand a complex malformation which is complex even by today's standards. And this is a diagram from this publication, from this book of 1793, which uh, shows uh, the fillet open right ventricle with the pulmonary artery and the aorta originating from, uh, from this uh, uh, ventricle. And I won't tire you with the history of um, uh, how this uh, understanding uh, of this lesion evolved, but uh, suffice it to say that um, uh, eventually, um, in 1957, the term double out the right ventricle was coined to um, describe both great vessels arising from the right ventricle. Uh, surgery for DORV, as uh, is uh, called, um, uh, was launched uh, with uh, repair by Kirkland in 1957 of one subcategory of DORV, the one which we called with subaortic PST that I will uh, describe uh, shortly. And uh, <clears throat> subsequent uh, um, um, repairs were devised for the various other types of BST. So currently, this lesion is defined as a, uh, a lesion where the uh, connection between the ventricle, the ventricles and the aorta is such that both the aorta and the pulmonary artery arise entirely or predominantly from the morphological right ventricle. And uh, if it is partial, uh, then uh, uh, a 50% rule is applied. So as long as 50% of uh, uh, override or more exists, is, uh, then we can, we can use this uh, definition. Um, I will just uh, then uh, describe that this lesion has been classified in various ways, and a very common way to classify it is by uh, describing the relationship of the VSD to the great arteries. Um, and uh, so we have, um, a, is there a way to point at uh, the mouse? Let's see. Hmm. Ah, this one, okay, thanks. So here you can see the VSD, and if it's related to the aorta, it's a subaortic VSD, or a subpulmonary VSD in the next diagram. Uh, if it is related to both great vessels, it is doubly committed, or it could be very remote from the great vessels. Um, and uh, this, uh, uh, however, uh, classification which is in use currently has been adopted by both the STS and the European Congenital Database is more of a functional classification. And there the VSD, as you see, is um, uh, classified as uh, uh, one which behaves more like a VSD, uh, one that behaves more like a tetralogy of halo, behaves more like a transposition with VSD, or um, we have the non-committed VSD type, and finally the um, uh, complex uh, complete canal DORV with heterotaxy. Um, and, oops, this doesn't. This is just to show the, the relative percentage of how these uh, uh, subtypes appear. 
and to note that um, uh, at the very uh, top uh, are the more complex uh, types and then uh, at the bottom the more relatively simple lesions. Now, how do we repair the DORB? Uh, it's a spectrum of anomalies. There are two main surgical strategies. One is to tunnel the left ventricle to the aorta or to tunnel the left ventricle uh, to uh, the pulmonary artery and then, of course, combine this with an arterial switch operation. There are the main determinants which allow us to decide which way to go um, are the alignment of the great vessels with respect to the VST and, of course, the tricuspid valve and the presence or absence of outflow obstruction of either ventricle. And there are many, um, there are many more elements that uh, the congenital surgeon has to consider, um, which mostly can be um, obtained by a 2D echo. And then essentially we can think of this as having um, to visualize <coughs> and decide on our strategy based on the spatial relationship of these anatomic key players. The aorta with the coronary arteries depicted here, the pulmonary artery, the tricuspid valve, and then the black hole here is the VST. So we keep the, uh, a fixed uh, point of reference, the tricuspid valve, and then these other uh, components can uh, be in different positions, and the red line there represents obstruction or the infundibular septum. So uh, there can be a rather elaborate algorithm of how to go about it. First we say, um, are the ventricles of adequate size and the valves, uh, uh, do they, are they struggling or do they uh, uh, prevent uh, biventricular repair? And if not, then of course uh, we go to a single ventricle repair. Otherwise, uh, then we uh, have to consider whether we can baffle uh, the VST to the aorta. So here we have sort of a schema of a DORB with the aorta posterior and to the right. And here we could uh, conceive tunneling the VST to the aorta. Um, if um, <coughs> we cannot do this uh, without obstruction, then uh, we have to uh, if we can do this without obstruction, then we uh, consider is, is there obstruction of the right uh, ventricular outflow tract to the pulmonary artery. And if not, then uh, here we have a, a relatively simple repair, which is called an intraventricular tunnel. Otherwise, it's a more complicated uh, repair. Um, and uh, again, I will, I will skip this uh, technical um, aspect, but... Uh, uh, here is uh, a concept of the intraventricular routing. So we have to uh, tunnel the VSD to the aorta, but a lot depends on the distance between these two structures. So uh, if uh, the distance is adequate, then we can construct a tunnel to do this. Uh, if, however, the um, distance between the tricuspid valve and the pulmonary artery is uh, too small, then the pulmonary artery is in the way and, and, and a more elaborate tunnel has to be constructed. <coughs> and again, um, uh, the, the surgeon has to think that, well, if we baffle the uh, uh, VST to the aorta, but this creates obstruction, then can we alternatively go to the pulmonary artery? And if not, then we have to go to a single ventricle approach, and if yes, then uh, we have to go down the decision tree. Um, here is um, uh, what the, uh, we would have to uh, think about. Uh, if there is obstruction, um, then we uh, can um, do this uh, tunneling to the pulmonary artery uh, and uh, then, of course, have to combine this with an arterial switch. And uh, I, I think I will, I will uh, just show you this example where the VST is very remote from uh, uh, the great vessels, and then this is a very complex situation because it is not easy to direct the blood flow from the left ventricle, which comes out of this uh, defect here, to either the aorta or the pulmonary artery. Now, um, the, there are techniques to do this, um, and uh, sometimes one can tunnel the VST to the aorta or sometimes to the pulmonary artery and do a switch. But uh, 
uh, one really has to uh, think very carefully about uh, the options and uh, it is not easy to decide uh, in some situations ahead of time uh, what you're going to do and the operations can be quite complex. Uh, this is a, a very uh, complex situation of double outlet with a complete canal. It is not like the trilogy with complete canal because of the number of issues uh, outlined here. Um, now, when all of these things are considered, then the surgeon has to uh, decide about the timing of surgery, and that, of course, uh, depends on whether there is or there isn't pulmonary overcirculation or sometimes cyanosis, the complexity and the need to construct elaborate structures within uh, the ventricular mass. And the outcomes um, are understandably um, um, not as excellent in some of the more complex lesions, which uh, fortunately are, are not the most frequent ones, and in the most frequent cases, the results are actually quite good. So let's go from theory to practice. With this background, which I really did not wish uh, to, uh, to burden you, because it is, uh, there are rather complicated algorithms, but let's just say, given a case, what does the surgeon really need to know? Okay, um, I need to know whether I can tunnel the VST to the aorta, and if there is adequate distance between the tricuspid and pulmonary valve to do it, and to wonder whether the tunnel will be too long. Or maybe I can tunnel the VST to the pulmonary artery. What would be the best access from a ventriculotomy, or through the atrium, or through both? Um, if there is outflow obstruction, uh, what is its nature? Can it be removed or not? Um, if one considers an arterial switch as a component of this operation, we need to know about the coronaries and we need to know about the valves. And here are the, uh, basically the four types of strategies that we could use. Um, but the problem is that to conceptualize the internal structure of the heart is not necessarily easy um, because the VSD and the other structures are described by our imaging colleagues using anatomical landmarks, uh, but it is not uh, easy to do this, actually. Uh, the types of VSD are overlapping, even though in the books they are uh, categorized in discrete categories. The relationship of the great vessels to each other uh, also is a little difficult to conceptualize. Uh, one, of course, could go to an anatomical library, and go to Leiden or to London or to Toronto and uh, try to study a similar heart and um, <clears throat> get a better understanding, but that's not very practical. And uh, here is where uh, a new technology can actually help us quite a bit. And that technology is uh, the construction of 3D printed physical models of the heart. In, uh, 2015, during the AATS meeting, that's only three, less than three years ago, the thoracic surgery news of the AATS um, noted that 3D printing is poised to transform cardiothoracic surgery, and I think I can show you that it really does. Now, what is 3D printing? It's constructing an object, in this case a heart, uh, in, by a methodology which is opposite to what we are used to. We're used to sculpture or uh, milling, and that means creating an object by removing material from uh, the final uh, product, to, to create the final product. But in 3D printing, we construct the object layer by layer, um, one on top of the other. And eventually, uh, based on imaging, we uh, create a replica of the actual patient's anatomy that we can use to study. In some ways, you can think of this as being a logical evolution of what we have always used as, as physicians. You know, it started with Andreas Vesalius drawing beautiful anatomical diagrams, um, but then we had to imagine the inside of a patient. Then we had x-rays, then we had a CT or an MRI, which gave us initially uh, uh, planar images and then virtual three-dimensional images on the screen, 
and then now finally we can have the actual object in our hand. And the way uh, the 3D printed model is produced is by, uh, well, we start with a clinical need to have it. Um, it has to be based on very good imaging, either CT, MRI, or 3D echo, or even a rotational angiogram. Then a segmentation process is involved uh, through which uh, the data is obtained, transformed, and printed. And um, <coughs> here is our, print, our 3D printing team. We have used this now for uh, two and a half years. And, and the reason it is appealing is that the surgeon needs to alter a three-dimensional structure and create a new one. So we must have a very good concept of what it is. We can always find out in the operating room, but it's not optimal. Um, we must create this uh, uh, concept mentally based on our knowledge of normal anatomy and past experience based uh, on prior, prior operations studies and coupled with patient-specific information from the imaging studies. Now, I submit to you that um, the 2D images or even the virtual 3D images contain less information than the total information residing in the mind of the imager, or whether uh, this is a cardiologist or a radiologist. And they do require expert interpretation to get this information in our brain. The cardiologist who does an echo um, knows that he, has, he or she has tilted the probe in a certain way and will tell us that the VST is a little bit higher than this. You can't see it here, but if I tilt my probe, it's there. Um, but that doesn't help us uh, necessarily. So a 3D model can summarize all this information um, and we can use it. And I will just show you four examples and then we will be done. Uh, this is a case um, of a small patient um, with a double out right ventricle. And you can see in this model that um, uh, the right ventricle gives rise to both great arteries um, and the left ventricle is blind. And if we go to the middle um, picture here, you see that there is a ventricular septal defect. The left ventricle, which is open here, is blind except for the VSD. And the ventricular septal defect is just underneath the aorta. So it would be possible to uh, create a relatively simple buff uh, baffle to um, tunnel the VSD to the aorta. It's not really VSD closure, because if you close the VSD, then you, you close off the left ventricle. So you ha actually have to create a tunnel. Um, so this is a case of a double out right ventricle with subaortic VSD. And uh, diagrammatically, it would be this, and we can tunnel the VSD to the aorta. Here is another case. Um, where if you hold this 3D printed model in your hand, again, you see that the left ventricle gives rise uh, to no great vessel. Both great vessels come from the, right vent from the right ventricle. And you already see that the outflow from the right ventricle is um, uh, very, very um, narrow. Uh, and uh, if you look at the internal anatomy in the middle model, then you see that there is a large uh, VSD uh, just underneath the aorta. Here is the left ventricle that's blind. And you can see to the right of the uh, screen there the, the small outflow tract. Um, so this is a case of a double out right ventricle with a subaortic VSD and subpulmonary stenosis, the so-called tetralogy type. And you can get this appreciation within one minute or two from holding uh, this model in your hand. You don't need really to be at a conference with two cardiologists and MRI specialists to, to, to understand this. Um, notice the arch, the aortic arch is interrupted. The, uh, subclav the right subclavian emerges from the descending aorta. The aorta is small, there's a huge pulmonary artery. And if you look inside, you see a large VSD which is just underneath the pulmonary artery. 
you can see that here. So you can tunnel this VST to the pulmonary artery, as we were discussing, and do a switch operation. So this is the so-called Taussig being anomaly, which is um, shown here diagrammatically. And um, this is a case of um, a double out right ventricle. And if you uh, look inside, you see that the VSD, which is uh, this one, if you look at it from the right ventricular side, um, I will have to. Well, unfortunately, there is a little bit. Well, <clears throat> this was a, a doubly committed VSD. It was a little bit cut off, but it was just underneath both uh, great vessels, and one could decide um, how, to, uh, how to handle this, as uh, also in this uh, particular case. And it's, it is uh, very easy to see that you could tunnel the VSD to either uh, of these great vessels. And of course, we would prefer to tunnel it to the aorta because then we would avoid uh, to do a, a VSD. Um, I will skip this because we're running a little late. And I will show you uh, this case of a VSD. Which is a, a double outlet case, double outlet right ventricle, a very unique case. Um, and you will immediately see what the problem is without going to a uh, cardiology conference. This is the VSD connection here. It's tiny. The left ventricle is blind, as you can see. The right ventricle over here gives rise to, um, here is the left ventricle, tiny VSD. Uh, no outlet from this ventricle except this little VSD. And so in this particular case, um, this VSD cannot be used uh, to tunnel the, um, the left ventricle to the aorta. In fact, it cannot be enlarged um, because it would create a, um, a very large uh, uh, damage to the interventricular septum, so this patient needs to have a Fontana operation. So, uh, in summary, the 3D printing technology in a complex anatomical situation, as the double right ventricle, uh, can provide very useful clinical um, uh, service uh, to plan surgery, and in other lesions, of course, it can be used for intervention. And I'd like to leave you with this application uh, which uh, Professor Turina alluded to earlier on, which is the educational component. Um, first, patients and family can really understand uh, what your, the surgeon's problems are and what uh, the plan is. Um, the team can understand what the surgeon will do, and uh, therefore, uh, this will enhance the efficiency of the team. But also, these models can be used to teach morphology and to engage in surgical simulation. As Dr. Turina mentioned before, um, simulation is, uh, of course, uh, um, standard uh, in the airline industry and in the Air Force. And medicine uh, is the only high-stakes industry that does not practice prior to game time on something which is patient-specific. We have wet labs. We have... Um, uh, other dry labs, but we don't yet have something that we can practice on the specific operation for the specific lesion of the specific patient. But now we can do this because uh, if we have a 3D model of a, um, uh, let's say, a complex lesion, the ORV or hypoplastic left heart syndrome, we can practice with the team the Norwood operation um, many times with zero risk to the patient. And since in the current era, it is no longer acceptable to have a very high learning curve, I think this can be invaluable. So in conclusion, um, for this particular lesion, we can say that anatomic repair can be achieved in the majority of patients with DRV with low mortality. Two main strategies, 
LV to aorta or LV to PA tunnel with a switch operation. The determining factors for surgical options we have covered uh, very well. The alignment of the vessel, the type of the VST, and the distance between the tricuspid valve and the pulmonary annulus and presence of obstruction. And um, secondarily, but I think equally important because this would apply to many, many lesions, uh, 3D printed models in selective cases improve up appreciation of the complex anatomy and facilitate surgical planning. Enhanced understanding of the anatomy uh, has been appreciated not only by the surgical but, but the ICU team and the cardiologists, in effect, the heart team. This work is, in, is evolving and involves further applications in surgical teaching and simulation as well as patient education. And I thank you on behalf of all of our team uh, in Athens and wish again Dr. Mitre great success uh, as he has uh, so admirably demonstrated in practice until now. Thank you.